Hi friends, today we are going to discuss on what is postmodernism. But before that, we have to understand the difference between or we have to compare and contrast what is modernism and postmodernism. First of all, we have to understand modernism to clearly understand postmodernism. That is why I have given the comparative view of both modernism and postmodernism. Modernism is defined as a style or movement in art, architecture and literature popular in the middle of the 20th century in which modern ideas, methods and materials were used rather than the traditional one. Here, postmodernism is defined as a style and movement in art, architecture, literature, etc., in the late 20th century that reacts against modern styles. For example, by mixing features from traditional and modern style. So look at the picture here. In the modern art or in modern literature, you could find only the modern element. But in the postmodern literature or in postmodern art, you can find the mixing of both traditional and modern style. Look at the pillar here in this building. The pillar is a traditional one, but it is built with the modern style. Modernism is roughly coterminous with the 20th century Western ideas about art. It is the movement in visual arts, music, literature and drama, which rejected the old Victorian standards of how art should be made, consumed and what is what does it mean? The stalwarts of modernism in literature endeavored to redefine what poetry and fiction could be and do. T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, Virginia Woolf, James Joyce, Proust, Kafka, Malami, Rilke, etc. are the doyens of 20th century modernism and literature. Postmodernism, in relation to literary criticism, owes its origin to Charles Olson, who first used the term in his essays in 1950s. In the 1960s through 1970s, critics like Igab Hassan, Susan Santar, Leslie Fielder, Linda Hutchian, Frederick James Jameson have discussed postmodernism in relation to literature and other arts. Postmodernism, which is a very complicated term, it emerged in an area of academic study in the mid 1980s of the last century. Its scope is very wide and comprehensive. The following are the characteristics of modernism that are conspicuous from the literary point of view emphasis on subjectivity and impressions in writing as in the stream of consciousness technique. Impressionism in art and literature uses subjectivity to convey a truthful sense of reality. Impressionist movement focused on light and movement. It dismisses the still life images of its forebearers. Rather, it depicts everyday life and cityscapes. A departure from the apparent objectivity provided by the omniscient third-person narrators, fixed narrative point of view and clear-cut moral positions, emphasis on fragmented forms, random seeming collages of different materials and discontinuous narrative, blurring of distinction between literary forms. For example, T.S. Eliot's poetry seems more documentary and the prose of James Joyce and Virginia Woolf seems to be more poetic. A rejection of formal aesthetic theories in favor of minimalist designs, spontaneity and discovery in creation. A rejection of the distinction between high and low or popular culture both in choice of materials used to produce art and in the methods of displaying, distributing and consuming art. 
post modernism like modernism follows most of these same ideas like rejecting boundaries between high and low forms of art for example the high form of art is epic like poetry low form of art is like gana poetry in post modern age there is no distinction between this high and low art but the way how it is presented that is important in post modern age and it rejecting the rigid genre distinctions say for example the poetry can be written as a prose like and a prose can be written in uh, like a poetry and there is an emphasis or uh, emphasizing on pastry parody bricolage irony and playfulness here pastry means the imitation of one style by another but unlike parody it does not contain irony and satire and it stands for reflexivity and self consciousness and there is a, the narration is a fragmented narration or the narration may be a discontinuous narration which means that the past and the present shuttling between each other and there is ambiguity simultaneity and an emphasis on the destructure decentered and dehumanized subjects modernism tends to present a fragmented view of human subjectivity and history but present that fragmentation as something tragic something to be lamented or mourned at last so modernism or modern poets or modern writers always talk about the loss of something that is the great value or human subjectivity something like that but the post modernism in contrast doesn't lament the idea of fragmentation or provisionality or incoherence but rather it celebrates the post modernist celebrates all this fragmentation or provisionality because they think that the world is meaningless let us not pretend that art can make meanings then let us just to play with nonsense this is what the ideals of post modernism the modernity is fundamentally about order about rationality and racialization creating order out of chaos so the modernism always talk about the order so that is why it has a division modern societies rely on continually establishing the binary opposition between order and disorder so there is always a, a thrust on order and disorder the binary positions so uh, the modernism cultivated austerity but post modern theorists like jean franco is lyotard equated that stability with the idea of totality so instead of saying what the binaries that is order and disorder he says that order and disorder are found in one whole thing so that totality or a totalized system so the post modernism is interested in pleasure rather than cultivating the austerity in the society thank you very much